I tweeted out a scene from the movie The Patriot. In this scene, they come across a home that's been burnt to the ground by the British. And they call them British by the, by the crown, by the regulars. Depending on the uh, time, everybody was technically subject of the crown, but they were resisting, depending on who you ask. They come across this burned down home, and a man jumps off his horse and runs over to find his wife and son murdered. And he paces back and forth, looks at the other men, begins crying, puts his flintlock to his head, and ends his own life. This man was willing to fight and die for the birth of a new nation. I know, it's, it's a story. I wouldn't say it's so much a story anymore, as there's been countless cases of men doing that exact same thing, but just replace the British with women or the family courts, because that's exactly what's going on right now, and has been for a while, and just goes to show how out of touch you are. But I love what it represents. He was willing to fight and die. Why? Because it would make a better and safer life for his family. It was what must be done. The threat to them was great. Same thing is true of Mel Gibson's character in The Patriot. He didn't want to be involved at all. Watch that movie. I love that movie. It's my favorite movie. And then you had the uh, fictional comic book villain of a British regular, of a British officer, who kills Mel Gibson's kid. And that basically drives the rage in his character to then go to war and engage in some very serious tactics, some guerrilla warfare. It's, it's particularly brutal. It's funny how you bring up how Mel Gibson's character reacts to having his son killed. Because today, we can't do that. Because do you really think a piece of paper saying you can't see your kid or you can only see your kid at these times is really what stops a guy? No, it's all the feds and the pigs that are going to show up to his house when he doesn't comply. Otherwise, he would be out there minecrafting anybody he needed to to get his kids back. And you making this comparison from men from 1775 and 2023 is rather unfair because times are drastically different. Because at those times, most of humanity relied on men to basically do everything. And they were rewarded with dominion over the family. But we don't have that anymore, Tim. As most jobs have become so easy that most women can do them, and there's a big push for them to do them, and soon enough, a lot of jobs won't need humans. So this problem is only going to get worse. So by giving the government the head of the family, being able to rip apart the family whenever the woman says so, and men having no recourse, yeah, there aren't going to be any Mel Gibson characters anymore. And so when I see that scene where the dude ends his life, I thought to myself, you can't do that, man. You can't. We need you. They took his kid from him, and the pain was too great to bear. But this means he let them do it. He needed to stand and fight, not for his children, but for everyone else's as well. The real question, Tim, is why wouldn't he do it? Because now men get their whole families taken from them and there's no recourse. And you tell him, nah, man, we need you. Need him for what? To build the roads, fix the sewers. But if he wants a family or even his own children, it's, no, well, wait, hang on there. We only need you to keep the infrastructure humming along and get someone pregnant so we can siphon your money away. And you're telling these guys to, well, just keep fighting, buckaroo. Most of these guys have been and they spent every cent doing it and they've gotten nowhere. And this is the reason why most men are checking out because there's nothing to fight for. But that scene is what uh, I thought of when I heard this story of Andre the Rooster. And we laugh because it's a silly little animal. But their lives to them, they matter. These, these roosters care about their families. And Andre, knew he cared about his family enough to sacrifice himself. Fear is real. But it's not a question of being fearless. It's a question of what do you fear more? And I think for most people, again, I don't know about roosters, but you know that's the point I'm kind of, kind of making. Most men have a greater fear than death. When they're running full speed to fight off a predator, to fight off a burglar in their home knowing they could die, there's something greater than death they fear, and that's what would happen to their family. And I saw a lot of people respond and say, I don't fear death, I fear being the last one left. This may be true for your age group, Tim, but I don't think you really know what's going on with the youth, because they're watching people like XQC, Sneeko, Aiden Ross, and we even had XQC openly say he would be sending down his girlfriend first during a burglary. And while the rest of them, they may put on a show, but we all know deep down that they're just little female dogs that would be on those lifeboats first. So no, Tim, the sentiment where guys fearing to be the last one dying isn't really going to be there anymore, especially in like 10 to 15 years, because by that time, there'll be hardly any families, and the guys that do will just be females with a dick. And I was like, that's a good way to put it. The pain you would experience from standing over the, the dead bodies of your loved ones is substantially greater than the death of dying. So... It makes me think about what it means to be a man. And this is not to diminish the, the uh, women's capabilities of self-sacrifice or to say that they don't. It's that men and women uh, have, uh, in generalities, it's bimodal. 
Women are the nurturers who protect and nourish on the short term. And men are the ones who take the more extreme actions of defense of their family consistently. The men will go out, they'll hunt, they'll provide, they'll protect, they'll stand guard over the village and the tribe. Problem with this, Tim, that most of these positions have been filled by the government, as we don't really need a guy to protect and provide nearly as much as we used to. As society has gotten so safe, well, as safe as it's going to get, ready to eat food on every corner, and everybody having the ability to earn this paper with men's faces on it to buy whatever they need. So with all that combined, this idealized version of what a man was is gone. And you guys spewing out, well, this is what a man does, is nonsense and not really needed today. And all these technologies has basically made the man's role a lot less significant. Almost like a deflation of man's labor. As now basically what all the roles that men used to do are covered by other things, whether it's government or technology, and society telling us we don't need you anymore, so men don't need to go do any of that stuff anymore. And guys like you telling us what men did 50, 11 years ago isn't going to help us today, as times have changed so much that if you brought someone back from that time period, we'd basically be aliens to them. And what all of you guys are really missing is that it's not a labor or task issue. It's a reward issue, as women get all these rewards of jobs, families, and whatever they want, while men get nothing, or such a small fraction of it. I don't see no scholarships for guys, campaigns for men in certain work fields, or can't even adopt. And we're lucky that surrogacy is becoming more of a thing, because at least that's one way a man can have a family. So you bring up what a man used to do is basically irrelevant, because that version of what a man was or is is gone, at least until there's war, famine, or a big asteroid. And the women will take care of the of creating humans and nurturing them to be good people. Fathers do too. Don't get me wrong. I know. And I think, you know, we see these stories about, uh, we've talked about it. What happens when someone grows up without a dad? You have high, high crime rates, drug abuse. And we don't ever ask ourselves, we should, what happens when people grow up without mothers? Actually, that question has been asked a lot. And we do have the stats for it. Most households that don't have a mother, everyone grows up fine. And in most cases, it's actually better to be raised by a single dad over a single mom with a lot more stability and order in the house. And this just goes to show you talking out of your wheelhouse because you have no idea what's going on out here, especially for the common guys. Because typically we think it's fine so long as they're not committing crimes. But I think there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a balance in this. Yes, you are right. There was a balance in this, and it's taken away by governments and self-serving women. And since you like movies so much, Tim, how about the Joker? You get what you deserve.